Repairing a Southworth 12 inch steam pump part 4, finding a serious fault which is probably the reason why the pump was dismantled. This clip shows the port face on the cylinder block and there is a problem with it. The three holes on this side of the block admit and exhaust the steam from the shuttle piston which moves one of the valves, but one of the ports is completely blocked, there is no way through. Blocked with what, you may be thinking, well it's either rust or the sealant that is a bit prevalent in this engine. I tried the compressed air line and that didn't move it, so I resorted to the nozzle of a tin of WD-40. If this doesn't work, I have a serious problem. So what is the problem? Well here you see the shuttle piston, I'm lubricating it with some WD-40 as a temporary measure, and pressed into the casting are two copper pipes, which in turn fit into holes in the cylinder block and transfer steam from the ports to the shuttle piston. You've probably guessed that if one of these steamways is blocked, which of course it is, then no steam is going to get anywhere near one end of the shuttle piston. And if I reassembled the pump, all that would happen is the main piston would go to one end of its stroke and stay there. I think while the WD-40 is doing its stuff, I'll just dismantle this valve. Here's another view of the steam chest casting, complete with the direct drive valve and the shuttle piston valve drive. I'm just trying to illustrate what happens using a compressed airline. As you can see, when I alternately fit the airline to one of the pipes, the shuttle piston moves from side to side. And now I'm back to the cylinder block, trying some more WD-40. Here I've inserted the WD-40 pipe into the hole at the other end where the steam is supposed to come out. Then all of a sudden, without warning, while I had the WD-40 can in the bottom hole, the blockage cleared and WD-40 went all over my camera lens. I'll demonstrate the blockage clearance one more time, but this time I'll point the block away from the camera. As you can see, both of these steamways are completely clear. Where would we be without WD-40? Compressed air didn't work at all, which was a bit of a puzzle. But now the WD-40 is running very freely through the once block port. The next part of this job is to take all of the parts down to my house and put them in my ultrasonic cleaner. What I tend to do with it is pre-fill it with very hot water. This warms the metal of the tank, then I empty all that water out and fill it again, but this time I add this stuff, it's called Carbusonic Carburetor Cleaner. I've switched the heater on to heat the water a bit further, and now all I need to do is put the parts in the basket and replace the basket in the ultrasonic cleaner. I've positioned the parts so most of them are fully submerged in the liquid. I set the water temperature to 80 degrees C, it's currently at 60 because this heater isn't all that good really, but it does keep the water hot. I set the ultrasonic cleaner to do it for 30 minutes, and here it is counting down. One viewer commented that my ultrasonic cleaner should not make a noise like this, and I thought well I'll check this before I answer. So I watched a couple of videos featuring this model which is the 15 litre, or 15L. The smaller ones don't make much noise, but this one does, because I think it has more ultrasonic transducers. I didn't really have enough of the carburetor cleaner, so I added some of this other stuff, which removes oxidation very well, and actually coats the parts in something or other which tends to prevent rust. It's very much the same as evapo-rust. I repeated the process and ran the unit for another 30 minutes, and then I put some of the parts in my rotary tumbler polisher but definitely not the cylinder block or anything with small holes in it, because this media, which is ground up walnut shells, gets everywhere and it would block small holes and then I really would have a problem. After about three hours in the polisher, I removed the parts to see what they look like. And they seem to have cleaned up very well. This is the top of the water chest. And eventually I found the rest of the parts. This is the hardest bit really. Once I got everything out of the polisher, I replaced the lid and the crossbar and the lock just to stop it spilling everywhere. Then I put the drum back on top of the machine where I store it. To reinforce my warning about putting certain things in a tumbler polisher that will easily block, you can clearly see that all the media is stuck around the edge of these, the valve lift limiters. I'm going to take them out. I was going to loosen everything up to get rid of the silicone rubber stuff anyway. Here I'm doing just that. I'm using a Proxon motor tool with a wire brush. 
and before reassembly I'm applying a very small amount of Loctite 542. This will seal the thread in the hole. Once I've fitted both of these ball lift limiters, once again using a small amount of Loctite 542, I tightened up the lock nuts. The cast iron parts cleaned up quite well, but they had this special coating that's put on by this liquid. I polished the cylinder cover using a piece of Scotch Brite, and here I put it back together once again with a tiny amount of Loctite 542 on the threads of the brass plug. Here's another example of the coating that's supplied by this liquid to ferrous metals. I started to clean this off using Scotch Brite, and then I realised there were a lot of tool marks on here, so I used a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. This easily removed the coating and made the metal shine. To get into the more inaccessible areas, I used a small wire brush in my Proxon motor tool and I was wearing eye protection. You must always wear eye protection when using these wire brushes. I mentioned previously about not putting parts into the tumbler that had steamways. I certainly didn't put the cylinder into the ultrasonic cleaner, but this one is okay because if the ports block up, I can actually get to them very easily by removing the two top covers. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.